Go away. Brushing up on some of my fly fishing uh, uh, techniques as is prospecting for trout. That's what I do in my spare time. Welcome to my wood shop. Today, we're gonna to talk about dry wood and wet wood, uh, or green wood. Um, in my category, I think the best wood to turn is if the squirrels were climbing in it yesterday. I love turning green wood. Uh, yeah, I can keep the bark on it, I can do natural edge bows. Uh, to me, that's my favorite. Uh, probably 95% of the time, I'll have a piece of green wood on my lathe. Uh, and what, I'm, what do I mean by green wood? It's, it's, it's that wet wood. When you go out there and cut a tree, uh, it's gonna be a piece of wood like this. It's green, it's wet, the moisture content is very high in it. Uh, it hasn't even started to dry. Uh, and that that's wood turning at its best. Number one, it's easier to sand, uh, it's easier to cut. Uh, you don't have the dust particles floating around the air to breathe. Um, it's just a lot of advantages to this. But the only disadvantage that I have with green wood, and it's not a huge task, is that after I get it dry, once I've turned this piece of wood to a bowl, uh, I have to take and put it back on the lathe and just flatten the bottom. And I do that by using a jam chuck. Uh, wet wood is fun. It's uh, it, it, it's plentiful, it's free. Uh, here in Kentucky, there, every time a storm comes through, there's a limb down somewhere, a tree down somewhere, and people got to get it out of the yard. All you have to do is go by and ask them, hey, they'll be glad to, for you to take a piece. They probably want you to take the whole thing. Uh, so, turning wet wood is a plus, uh, especially for the cost factor. Uh, you know, and, and again, it's easy to turn. Uh, the next one is that you would look at would be dry wood. Uh, I want to focus on something uh, when you go buy a piece of dry wood, if, you, if that's what you have to do, is that if you will look on here and uh, we can zero in here, we're going to see some growth rings going around this. And you'll see that this, this piece of, uh, this is ambrosia maple, and these growth rings are right here. Now, if I go to the store and looking for a piece of wood in their wood pile, I want a bowl like this where the pith of that log was right out here from that. So you can see those growth rings that I've grown, drew, drew on there, and that helps you design a perfect bowl. Um, sometimes you don't want a perfect bowl, but if you want uh, similarity from one side of the bowl to the other side of the bowl, uh, choosing your dry wood can be a little bit more difficult because you have to pass up a lot of pieces to get that perfect piece. Um, now I can take and in this piece of dry wood, like my bowl would be out right there, or I could put it around the other way where the mouth of the bowl would be down there where the pith is. Now let's talk about this uh, dry piece of wood as far as the turning. Uh, one thing about the turning the dry piece of wood, it's harder because it's dried out more so it's going to be harder to turn than your wet wood. Uh, there's going to be a whole lot more sanding dust floating around. I encourage you to wear a mask, um, especially when you have spalting in wood. Uh, what do I mean by spalting in wood? Spalting is in black lines and getting wood that is uh, decay. Uh, it's the first stages of rot in that tree, and you definitely don't want to breathe, uh, breathe in the spores of those uh, floating around in the air. So uh, wear that mask if you're doing spalted wood or any wood if, if you feel comfortable doing that. Uh, but this is a dry piece of wood. Um, sometimes you have to buy them or else you have to cut them out of your blanks yourself, dry wood. Now, if I cut this piece and it's three inches thick, that means that this piece is not gonna be dry for three years because wood dries one inch a year as a rule of thumb. Always give or take a little bit depending on the species of wood that you're dealing with. Uh, I, I like turning uh, dry wood on certain occasions, but not very often. Most time, I like for them squirrels to be climbing in it yesterday. Uh, <coughs> once you've uh, 
got your bow blanks and stuff lined out, uh, turning dry wood and spindles and snowmen and stuff like that. I like dry wood. I turn the dry wood. I can either buy it, I can cut it out of the logs myself. Sometimes <coughs> I will, excuse me, I will take a piece just like this that I've cut out in between the logs off the end. And you can see that I could definitely get a small snowman out of this one or any kind of Christmas ornament. Uh, so that wet wood is uh, very, very useful because if it's free, I can bring it in. I could slab it out, cut some staves out of it, put it up, put you a date on it. You know, whatever the date is, uh, 12, 14, uh, whatever, 2019. I always put the year on it and the month on it especially uh, so that I can go back and say, okay, that thing's been up there. It's three inches thick. It's been up there laying on my shelf for three years. Uh, I know that piece is dry. So I can I can chuck that piece up on my lathe and uh, make some ornaments out of it. Spindles, staves, whatever you want to turn out of them. So as far as wet wood versus dry wood, they both got its time and places. Don't kick e either one of them out, but use that wood that's plentiful out there. If you're in an area that has a lot of trees going down, utilize it. Uh, it, it is awesome, awesome way to get wood, especially when it's free. Thank you, and I'll see you on my next video.